Ah, all right. I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to kind of use this as a little bit of an introduction just to let you all know um, what we think about and our ethos. And I want to talk about ethos and polyculture definitely has a lot to do with that. Um, but right, right this, no, yeah, maybe you could hold that. So my wife, Elizabeth, who's not here, um, has spent all, all this time in, in the garden understanding um, our relationship to our farm. And in that process, what we do is, is we try to create an artistic project. And she uh, does this art that tries to hit on all the important things that we need to be thinking about as a farm. And so this, this piece of art is actually a, a, a way for people to explore further and in depth all the different components. And I want to talk a little bit about it, even if you can't see it very well. Um, but it's very, it's very calendar oriented. And as farmer or someone who's caring for land and taking care of uh, plants, you know, we have to pay attention to the cycles. And so you see a lot of cycles. This corner is winter spring and their little depictions of kind of like work on a farm in a magical land um, um, and yeah winter spring summer fall we got the moon cycles here we've got the pagan holiday symbols in relationship to those uh, to those quadrants and um, then we've got the turtle which represents the turtle island where we are living right now on in North America and, and so we rest on the back of the turtle and, and this is our pinkleberry. And the pinkleberry is something really special for us because it was, it's so beautiful that it drew a lot of attention um, to our whole scene, which was really nice. It was like this really blessing from the cannabis plant. And so I've been caring for that pinkleberry for a long time and I'm really thankful for that. And so it kind of sits at the center for our cannabis business. Um, but what it shows really well and what I really like the most is this relationship between root systems and watersheds. And so what you see here is a watershed feeding a root system that's making a plant that's interacting with the cosmos. And all those things are really important to be paying attention to and understanding, even if you don't get it, even from a non-scientific place, but the understanding I'm talking about is the feeling of connection to it. And everybody has spent time looking at the stars. And everybody has felt the power of the earth beneath their feet, especially if they've been in a place that's wild. And so we have to understand, and when I talk about polyculture and cannabis, I really want to emphasize how much we need to start integrating our ecological nature into our production zones. And now we have to figure out the systems that we don't have to fear that the deer is going to eat our plants and we don't have to worry about the gophers eating the roots and we don't and actually increase all of those animals populations and learn how to take care of them so they have what they need. So what is this? This is a relationship between a bunch of different cultures that helps us understand how to relate with our space and right now I think you know so many people want to know how to grow cannabis but I want to say to you it's not about growing the cannabis it's about paying attention to the interconnectivity of all living things and all life and once you start honing in on the fact that we are all connected and you care enough to want to care for this planet, you're going to want to start interacting with that in a way that's actually helping. And so what is actually helping? Planting diverse polyculture in your garden is actually helping the world get healthier. And the reason that's happening and the importance of those root systems in relation to the watershed is that it's the root systems in the top soils that are responsible for holding water. And if you hold enough water, then life can be born. The more life that can be born, the more plant material and biomass you can create in that space. So actively increasing fertility without inputs is what we need to be focused on. We should not buy soil to start our farms. Our farms are all on soil. So let's stop the habits of buying engineered soils. There is no way that engineered soils made by somebody 
who's got a recipe that's going to make your 10-pound plant. There's no way that recipe and that engineered soil can compete with the infrastructure of what biology can create in the soil if left to its own device, and then to care for it by mulching and increasing its potential. That's how we increase the humus potential of our space, and it leaches into everything downstream, and the more root systems in the ground, the cleaner the water is when it enters the streams. So this is another important thing to be thinking about. Perennial plants in your production garden is very important. Annual plants such as cannabis and, you know, yeah, maybe one time they're perennial, maybe they can perennialize in some places, but they're only there for a very limited amount of time. They accumulate nutrients very quickly. Let's understand that and make sure we're dealing with our farm waste, our animal waste, and feeding it to that so that it can attain that growth that we're looking for. The perennials play a role in catching the excess amount of nutrients that's coming from the manures and the barn wastes and the carbon-based stuff, and it, it pulls it back into life form. And now you've caught that excess nutrients, you've mined the nutrients back into biomass that can later feed the system again. And so this is the important thing. Polyculture is like the best mineral recycling program we could involve ourselves in. And to think that you have to go out and purchase any kind of minerals to remineralize your soil, is it, it's not true. Uh, carbon, forests, they're the best mineral accumulators. And if you want to go to a store and give something to someone, give your energy and love to the forest. That's where we should be investing all of our money, if we have any, and we should be willingly giving our money to uh, missions and people who are trying to put more roots in the ground so that our water is cleaner when it enters the ocean. And that's, that is how we're going to clean everything. The mountains act as the water storage tanks. When the forests are healthy, the water is absorbed um, unbelievably. When you cut a road in your hillside to create uh, access, you oftentimes start depleting the potential infiltration of that system. So we have to look at remediating and healing all the damage we've done building our farms. Unfortunately, we're not tuned in enough to actually make the best ecological decisions with our big machinery. So if we're going to be using big machinery and we're going to be using gas-powered uh, stuff, it, it's only to fix all the problems that that stuff created. And the old timers in the back, they never relied on the machines in their field, so why should we? Shouldn't we want to have to work for our lives and have something to do every day that's fulfilling and rewarding? Why are we giving those jobs to machines? It's ruining the planet, it's ruining the water, it's polluting everything, it's toxic for us, it's, it's, it's bad. So, the message is, Diversity. Everybody that's been up here talking talks about these things and this is the momentum that needs to carry through to the whole world. And we're kind of a, you know, we're a small group amongst a whole lot. But what we need to do is start to resonate with this information, become closer to nature and begin sharing and supporting these systems. If we don't do that, we know what's going to happen. But since we haven't fully tried that yet, we might as well give it a try. And how do you begin that process? Well, nature, regardless of what you see around you, is everywhere. And so giving yourself the time to get away from the technology and the stresses of economic worlds and the dollars, take time in your life on a regular basis to give thanks for the ultimate source of all life. And that is the thing that sits beneath our feet our whole lives. No matter how long you live, it's there. It's, it's supporting you. So giving that respect to our gardens and when we approach space to start growing things, approach it with more respect than you could imagine. And feel like you need to be very delicate to it and ask it what it wants. And, and, and if you feel like you're beating it up and doing too much, you probably are. Because the biology does a great job of building the, the infrastructure for the healthy system. And every time we go in there and 
and get too big in terms of destruction, we end up ruining legacies of biology. But this doesn't mean that all disturbance in ecology is bad. This just means that we have to understand that ruining a lot in a big area at once is a bad choice. There are ways to work in thin strips for your annual crops amongst your perennial crops. So what we have to do is get comfortable with realizing that our perennial crops aren't always stealing everything from that cash crop we're trying to grow. In fact, if you trust more and more in nature, it gets better and better as you do it. So you might make mistakes and you might understand that cedar roots definitely do not allow cannabis to come to its full fruition, but what do you do then? You don't hack the cedar tree down because it's putting roots in your garden. You're thankful that those cedar roots have a place to allow that tree to get bigger and you move your production over a little bit and, and give that tree the, the sacred respect that it deserves, having been there way longer than any one of us will ever be. So I'm all about integrating uh, the ecology, the wildlife, and the nature into these spaces of production because what does this community, what does this humanity need more than anything right now is a little infusion from the wild world of nature. And remember that it's okay to have calluses and it's okay to dig all day and you shouldn't feel bad for people who are doing work they believe in even if it's really hard and it's a whole lot. Don't pity yourselves because you're doing a lot of labor. And uh, I'll leave it at that. You guys can ask me questions and stuff out there, but I really appreciate this opportunity and just want to make sure that we're all taking care of this place that we call home. So thank you.